Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another gold guide for you. With the release of 7.0 came a ton of nerfs to the garrison. Because of this, two questions I get a lot are if garrisons are worth using anymore, and if so, what is the best setup? So in this video, I thought I'd go over a post 7.0 optimized gold setup for your garrison, and I'll throw you some numbers so you can decide for yourself if it's worth it or not. This setup is more aimed towards lazy people like myself who don't want to spend a ton of time in their garrison. You can make more gold by choosing buildings that require a bigger time investment, and I'll mention that when it's appropriate, but overall, this setup is aimed to be as fast as possible while still earning you some good gold. First up, let's start with the small buildings and professions. There are a lot of different choices here, especially with the recent salvage yard nerf which opened up a lot more options. For my setup, I like to run with the Alchemy Lab, the Tailoring Emporium, and the Scribes Quarters as my small buildings, with Inscription and Tailoring as my professions to support that on all of my characters but one, with the last one having Alchemy instead of Inscription. Allow me to explain why. First up, let's cover the Tailoring Building with Tailoring as a profession. From this building, you can craft the Draenor Level Bag, the Hexweave Bag. You buy the recipe for this from your building NPC for 5 Secrets of Draenor Tailoring, which is one of your daily crafts. You'll learn all of this drainer level stuff from the 100 gold scrolls that these NPCs sell. This is a 30 slot bag, and it requires 100 hex weave cloth and 10 sorcerous earth each to make. The reason why this is a really appealing choice in terms of gold is that even through Legion, this is the highest capacity craftable bag that you can get. Because of this, it should retain its value through Legion and maybe even raise in price due to everyone abandoning their garrison, thereby reducing the supply. Another event that may cause these to see an increase in price is the release of the new Demon Hunter class. This class only starts with 20 slot bags, and a ton of people are going to be making them. So one of the first things people will do after making them is buy up the best bag possible. So like I mentioned, you'll be needing Hexweave Cloth and Sorceress Earth to make these. For the Hexweave Cloth, you'll be getting these through your daily craft, work orders, and rush work orders from your mission table. So to maximize your Hexweave Cloth output, you'll want to have this building leveled to 3 and have a follower assigned to it. So, to give you an idea of just how much gold this building can produce, let's do a little math. Your daily craft awards you with 20 hex weave cloth as long as you have level 700 tailoring, and as long as you have a follower assigned to the building, each work order takes 4 hours to complete, and each one gives you 4 cloth, so that's another 24 daily. And as long as you have the building at level 3, you'll also be getting those rush orders from your garrison missions. These instantly complete 5 work orders. On average, you'll be getting around 7 a week, so that's 1 daily, which results in another 20. So, that's 64 cloth on a daily basis. Now don't give too much credence to this number because it's heavily server dependent and time dependent too, but currently, these bags are selling for around 950 gold across all US servers, so that's around 600 gold daily. I got this number from the Undermine Journal, which is a website that keeps track of auction house data across every server. Also keep in mind that those bags may see an increase in price due to those reasons I mentioned earlier. This number also doesn't include the cost of Sumptuous Fur, Gorgrunt Flytrap, and Sorceress Earth needed to produce the bags but you'll be able to get those in your garrison as well. I'll explain that in a bit. Next up for our small buildings, we have the Scribes Quarters. Our moneymaker for this one are the Cards of Omens. You learn these from the Draenor Inscription Scroll sold by your building NPC. These are the gambling cards for the Draenor expansion. You craft them in packs of 10, and when you use them, they turn into vendor trash ranging in value from 1 copper to 6,000 gold. They cost 5 war paints and 10 light parchments each to make. Similar to the Tailoring Emporium with their Hexweave Cloth, You'll be getting the war paints through your daily craft, work orders, and rush work orders. So on a daily basis, you'll be getting 64 war paints, which results in 128 cards of omens a day. Once again, don't put too much value into this number, but these are currently selling for around 9 gold and 80 silver across all US servers, so that's around 1,250 gold per day. You can also flip these yourself if you're feeling lucky, but I only recommend that if they don't sell for a lot on your server. A Reddit user by the name of Schrobert actually flipped 250,000 of these and recorded his stats. And in total, it turns out that each card has an average value of 4 gold and 63 silver. So if they're selling for less than that on the auction house, they may be worth flipping them yourself instead. Just like the Tailoring Emporium, you'll want to have this level to 3 and have a follower assigned to it. And to supply all of this, you'll be needing Cerulean Pigments. You get this from milling Draenor level herbs, which once again you can buy off the auction house or get them through the herb garden. If you do plan on milling a lot, I highly recommend picking up the mass milling recipes from the Daily Garrison Trader. It speeds it up by quite a bit. Anyways, lastly we have the Alchemy Lab. From this building, your main moneymaker is going to be the Draenic Philosopher's Stone. Now you do need alchemy to be able to craft this, but the cool thing about the Draenor level alchemy material, the alchemical catalyst, is that they're not soul bound. 
So this is why you're going to want at least one alchemist on your team. This is something you can still get as a non-alchemist and just send it to your alchemist to convert it into gold. As I mentioned, we'll be converting these into Draenic Philosopher Stones. Once again, you can buy the pattern for this from your building NPC for one secret of Draenor Alchemy. They're really cheap to make. They only need one true iron ore and five alchemical catalysts. These vendor for 21 gold and 22 silver each, and you'll be getting 44 alchemical catalysts on a daily basis from your work orders and rush orders for all but one of your characters, with your last character being an alchemist so you can get an extra 20 from your daily craft. So for your non-alchemists, this results in 8.8 .8 Draenic stones per day, which is around 185 gold after vendoring them. So this building is nice because it's guaranteed gold. It's a nice option for those of you who don't like messing with the auction house. So just like the tailoring emporium, you'll want this building leveled to 3 and make sure you have a follower assigned to it to boost your work orders. Another good thing about alchemy is that it also provides those sorcerer's earths that you need for your hexweed bags. In general, through your work orders, you'll be getting a variety of different sorcerer's materials. Earth, fire, water, and air. If you're an alchemist, you can convert the latter three into earth via the sorcerer's element recipe that you get from your daily garrison trader. To run all of these work orders, you'll be needing frostweed. You can buy this on the auction house for a pretty cheap price, or you can get it from a level 3 herb garden if you have a follower assigned to it. So that pretty much covers it for the small buildings. Next up, let's go over the medium buildings. This is where you can have some variety. For my first medium building, I have a level 3 inn. This of course allows you to recruit followers, and if you have it at level 3, you'll get more garrison resource missions, which you'll need if you want to supply yourself without having to visit the auction house. As for your recruiting, make sure you pick the extreme scavenger trait. This gives you 200% more resources on resource missions, so it's a huge boost. You can get this with the normal scavenger trait as well and its stacks, but that's pretty rare, so don't count on that too often. For my second medium building, I like to go with the trading post. Now this was nerfed in 7.0. Its prices were increased by 4 times, bringing the cheapest items to 16 resources and the most expensive to 40. From here, you want to buy your Sumptuous first so you have a steady supply of it for all of your tailors. There are several different traders that show up randomly on a daily basis, and they have different rates. The ones we're interested in is Trader Eula for Alliance and Elder Shurhide for Horde. They sell Sumptuous Fur at a rate of 16 resources each, which is the cheapest that you can get them. So even with the 4 times increase in price, most of the time it is enough to supply your tailors without having to stop by the auction house, and that's mainly due to the new Extreme Scavenger perk. You can get just a crazy amount of resources if you're stacking that. As long as all of your followers are decently leveled, that is. The only problem that can arise from this is that if you don't get Trader Eula or Surehide for several days in a row, and you cap out on garrison resources, unfortunately they still cap out at 10,000 and with the recent patch it's much more volatile. You get way more and you spend way more. So this sometimes forces you to buy fur from an expensive trader, or just stall out on missions in your daily cash. If you do take this building, keep it at level 1 since that's all we need for the vendors to show up. There is an alternative to this building, although it requires more work, and that's the barn. This building, if you don't know, allows you to trap creatures in Draenor, and you use them in work orders to get meat, leather, or sumptuous fur. It can be pretty lucrative, and it can also be a good way to keep up a good stock on fur. The only downside is that it does require you to actually exit your garrison and do some legwork. This building also gives you Savage Bloods, which you can sell on the Auction House or trade for the Bloody Gold Purse from the Trading Post. These bags were untouched in 7.0 and they have around 50 gold in them, so make sure you never sell it for less than that on the Auction House. To add on to all of this, you can also purchase Rush Work Orders for the barn at the cost of 1,000 garrison resources each, which is really good. This removes that danger of capping out while waiting on the trader, and you'll be able to get them pretty often with the amount of resources you'll be getting. Like I said though, the only problem is that it requires a time investment. Personally, I don't like spending more than 5 minutes per character, so I just stick with the trading post, but it is an option for those willing to earn more gold with more work. If you do run this building, make sure you trap elite wolves in Nagrun because they give you fur, and make sure you have it leveled to 3 with a follower assigned to it to increase the amount of savage bloods that you get. Since we're on the subject of self-sustainability, I think it's worth mentioning that you do have another option for a small building, and that's the salvage yard. Although this building was pretty heavily nerfed, one of the redeeming factors to it is that the new crates also give you garrison resources. So if you do find yourself not being able to get enough fur to support your tailors, this is definitely an option. Personally, I would just cover what I can get by visiting the auction house since those other three buildings are pretty lucrative. But it's just something I wanted to bring up since it's nice to have different options. If you do want to use this building, I would suggest replacing the alchemy lab on your non-alchemists, and you're going to want to level it to 3. Anyways, next up, let's talk about the large buildings. For my first one, I like to go with the barracks. 
At level 3, this increases your maximum followers by 5, increasing the maximum cap to 25. So this one is pretty self-explanatory. More followers equals more resources. For the second large building, you do have a couple of choices. My preferred choice is the Mage Tower, and that's for the teleport. If you have this building, you get two arcane elementals that you can position to teleport yourself around the garrison. It's nothing huge, but the time does add up if you have a lot of characters. My favorite spot for Alliance is right beside the garrison mission table, so I can quickly get in and out when I need to. There's probably a similar spot for Horde, too. Make sure you keep this building at level 1 if you do grab it, since that's all we need for the teleport. And another option for your second large building is the Dwarven Bunker. This is a good choice if your followers aren't maxed out yet because at level 2, you can start work orders for those follower upgrade tokens in exchange for garrison resources. So this one is more aimed towards those of you just starting out your setup. It is also worth noting that the salvage yard can also be a source of follower upgrade tokens as well. Anyways, that's pretty much it for all of the main buildings. We also have the tertiary stuff such as the mine, the herb garden, and the pet menagerie. The herb garden, like I mentioned earlier, may be a good idea since you'll be needing frostweed for your alchemy lab and cerulean pigments for your scribes quarters. And you'll also need a smaller amount of Gorgon flytrap for your hexweed cloth daily crafts. It can take a while to go through, especially if you have a lot of characters. Personally, I just get my herbs through the auction house, but it is worth running through for those of you wanting to maximize your profits. If you do decide to go for this building, make sure you level it to 3 and have a follower assigned to it because this allows you to pick whatever herb you want. So go mostly with Frostweed and a little bit of Flytrap if you're following the setup to a T. And the same goes for the mines. The only thing you'll need from this is the true iron ore for your Draining Philosopher's Stones, but it's a very, very small amount. It's not 100% necessary by any means. But if you do decide to run this building, make sure you level it to 3, run work orders on it, and have a follower assigned to it since it boosts your work orders. Lastly for buildings, we have the Pet Menagerie. This does have some gold making potential as well. You can get a daily quest from here that awards you with pet charms. These are used as currency in the building to buy pets, toys, leveling stones, and so on. And these charms are going to be used in Legion as well, which gives them even more value. As for the best item to spend your pet charms on, that'll be heavily server dependent, so I'll leave that up for you to decide. One thing I will say that a lot of people don't think of is that you can actually make money off of those leveling stones by leveling other people's pets. These are soulbound, but what you can do is use them on someone else's pet to level it to 25, cage it, and then trade it back to them. And the same goes for the rare quality upgrade stone. I typically see people charging two to 3,000 gold for this, but just like the pets and the toys, this will be dependent on your server and its economy. But if you do run this building, make sure you level it to 3 to maximize the amount of charms that you get. And that's pretty much it for the buildings. The last thing I want to talk about are the garrison missions, specifically the patch 6.2 rare missions. These are the missions that give you valuable items such as the Elixir of the Rapid Mind, the Coal Fist Groundling, Oil Barrels, and so on. To unlock them, you do have to meet a few requirements, and that's a character item level of 675, 3 eye level 675 followers, 7 more followers with an item level of 645, and 15 more followers that are level 100. I do recommend knocking these out if you plan on using your garrison. They show up once a week, and some of the items can go for a couple thousand gold, so it's not too bad. So in conclusion, using those very rough estimates earlier, you'll be getting an average of around 2,050 gold on a daily basis. And that's not including the unpredictable stuff such as the rare 6.2 missions. And once again, keep in mind that it's going to vary a lot depending on your server's economy and the time that you're viewing this video. So try not to give too much value to that number. The only reason I put it here is to give you a very rough idea of the potential of the setup post 7.0. But as for the question if garrisons are worth it or not, it's hard to say. You know, it's a subjective thing. 2,000 gold might be a lot to some people and nothing to others. Personally, for me, once Legion actually hits on the 30th of August, I'll be leaving it all behind. Like many others out there, I've been playing Draenor since its launch, so I've had enough of garrisons no matter how lucrative they are, and I'm ready to move on. It's not that I really hate them like a lot of people do, but I just want to focus on Legion content and follow the natural evolution of the game. As for the question, is it worth starting from scratch? I think if nothing else gets nerfed and you plan on sticking with your garrison in the long term, it is worth it. There is a big investment, both time and gold, to setting all of this up, but you will eventually make your gold back and then some if you stick with it in the long term. But that's pretty much it. Once again, keep in mind the date that this video was made because things could have gotten nerfed by the time you're viewing this. As always, I'll try to keep everything as updated as I can with annotations and whatnot, but it's just something to look out for. Also, I'm in no way saying that what you saw in this video is quote-unquote the best setup. It's just one that I prefer because I can knock it out really quickly. This will probably be the last time I do a garrison video. I've revisited this so many times I've lost count. 
I thought this last one was worth making though since it's a question I do get a lot. Anyways though, I hope you found this video helpful. Give it a like if you liked it, and if you really liked it, let me know in the comments and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, good luck, and peace.